Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Ross, your instructor. In today's video, I'm going to teach you about alphanumeric grouping. That's putting records into groups like A through M goes into group 1, N through S goes into group 2, T through Z goes into group 3, and so on. This way you can search for a name, for example. Schools do this all the time. You type in the name Rick, and okay, you're in group 2, for example, or you're with Mr. Smith. All right, that's what this lesson's about. Today's question comes from Nancy from Swanton, Maryland, a gold member. Nancy says, I've created a database containing words from a printed dictionary. I've entered in the first word that appears on each page and the page number. I would like to be able to search for any word and have the database tell me what page it should appear on. For example, if page five starts with elephant and page six starts with gorilla, if I search for fox, I want the database to tell me it should be on page five. Sometimes for the tech help videos, I simplify the question a little bit. Nancy actually sent me an email with some screenshots of the database she's been building. It's actually pretty impressive. She's got some different dictionaries she's scanned the pages in and she's saved image files for those. And some of them are translation dictionaries between like Hebrew and English, and it's really cool. She wants to be able to type in a word and then have the database tell her what page of the dictionary it should appear on. While I was preparing this for her, I thought this is actually something I've seen groupings like this in a lot of different places. Businesses use it. Schools use it. They say, OK, if your last name begins with A through M, you're in group one or you have teacher Mr. Smith, right? Group N through S, you're in group two. OK, so if you get a student and you type in, you know, Richard Ross, last name R, the database should be able to tell me I'm in group two. How can I set this up in Access? Now, in order to do this properly, we have to use a function called dmax. I suggest you pause the video right now and go watch the dmax tutorial, although I will show you how to do it in just a second. dmax is a very close cousin to dlookup, where you can look up a value in a table or query. I've got tutorials on that, too. Go watch the dlookup stuff first. Now, once you're familiar with dmax and dlookup, let's continue with this lesson. Okay, here's my blank customer database. You can get a copy of this from my website. Again, I'll put a link down below in the description. Just download the blank customer database. All right, here's the blank database, and we don't need a lot of this stuff. We don't need the customer and contact tables or any of this stuff here. So let me just clean this out a little bit. Okay, continuous form and a single form. Actually, for this, we're not going to need the single form either. Get rid of that. We'll keep the main menu and the continuous blank form. Okay, let's create a table, table design. Turn off this property sheet over here. This table will hold all of the pages in my dictionary. So we'll start off with the page ID. That'll be my auto number. Then the first word that appears on each page, that'll be text. Then the actual page number. Now those should be one through whatever. You don't want to rely on your auto number. You want to put these numbers in yourself. Okay. So this will be a number. Because if you end up deleting auto numbers in the middle, you know, page seven, you delete it, you start it over. You got to mess with stuff to get those numbers back. Can you do it? Yeah, you can, but it, there's tricks. So it's best just to not rely on that auto number for anything except for relationships in the database. So we're going to put in the page number ourselves. Can you automatically increment that to the next one? Yeah, sure you can. I got videos on that one too. I'll put a link down below for auto incrementing counter variables. Okay, let's save this. This will be my page T, my page table. Let's put some data in it. All right, the first word on each page. All right, let's just do names. Let's say we got Aaron, that's on page one. Bruce starts page two. Charles is on page three. Edward starts page four. And you see how this works, right? George, page five, and so on. Okay? So the goal here would be to type in a name like Christine and have the database say it belongs on page three. CHR would come after Charles, but before Edward. So it's going to appear on page three because Edward starts page four. All right, so I'm going to slide you down over here for just a minute so we can see you over there. Actually, let's put you over here. Okay. 
Now, I'm going to use this little Hello World box here because this, unfortunately, is going to require some VB code to type in something and then have it return a value. You can, I mean, you can do this in a query, but it's kind of weird, and it's only going to return one value anyways. So you might as well do a little bit of programming. Don't be scared. If you've never done any VB programming before, go watch my Intro to Access VBA. Again, I got a free video on it. I'll put it in the links down below. If you've never done any programming, go watch that now. So what I put in my template here is a simple button and a text box. I can click on the button, and it puts Hello World in that text box. And I use this for getting values. So I don't have to message box stuff or use the immediate window. I can just put stuff I want in this button. So we're going we're gonna to put this button here to use. So let's go Design View. All right. I'm going to uh, slide, I'm gonna slide this up, by the way, here a little bit. Put this up top. Give me a bigger box here. All right, like this. And I'm going to put a text box up here that'll be our target word. Okay, so I'm going to come up to design, grab a text box, drop it right there, and we'll slide it over here. And right here, I'll put the word target in there so we know what this is, right? Target. We'll make that white. There we go. And we'll name this guy the target. Okay, that's my target word. I'm going to stick a default value in there right now, just, just for class. I'm going to put the word Christine in there so I don't have to keep playing around with typing it in. Okay, close that, save changes, open it back up again. All right, there's my default target word. Doesn't do anything yet, though. Okay, you with me so far? All right, first, let's do a, a quick D max. All right, we're working with the D max. Let's use D max just to see what the largest word is in the table is okay design view right click build event here's my code editor and i'm going to just shrink this down a little bit so you guys can see it better there we go i don't need the watch window and for this i don't really need the project explorer either and just to make things simple i'm going to get rid of all these buttons that we don't need okay just to just to clean things up a little bit here let's get rid of these guys too okay now all we really need is this hello world button right here okay so Let's DMAX the largest first word in the table. Okay, so DIM, let's call it uh, let's call it S as a string. All right, it's a string variable, and S is going to be equal to DMAX the first word from the page table. All right, so find me the largest first word field in the page table. Okay, then I'm going to status S, which is just going to display it in that little box there. Okay, and in fact, here I'm going to make some more room here for this stuff. Let me slide this over here. I'll get rid of my advertising. Okay, save it. Yes, close that. Open it back up again. Ready? Hello world. Boom, George. That's the largest value in that page T. All right, see how that works? If we want to see the largest page number, just change the field, right? Page, number. Boom. That's five is the largest page number. Okay, let's go back to that, the first word. All right, how do I see the smallest one? Well, that's a dmin, a related function, right? The minimum. Boom, Aaron. Okay, so now what I'm actually looking for is I want to bring back the page number. So again, let's go back to page number. Okay, and I want the largest page number, all right, Dmax, the largest page number where the first word is smaller than the target. All right, I want the largest page ID where the first word is smaller than the target. So we're going to have to add a criteria over here, comma, where the first word is less than or equal to the target. So the target has to be inside of quotes inside of here. So Quote, quote, and target, and one, two, three, four quotes. Okay? This is because this has to say first word is less than or equal to target, and target itself has to be inside of quotes, and that's just how we formulate that. If this looks confusing, I know I've got a video specifically on these double, double quotes and string concatenation. I'll put that in the links down below, too. Okay, so now when I run this, I get a three. Why do I get a three? Well, it's finding the largest page number where the first word is less than the target. All right, so the first word being less than target would be Charles is the largest one. All right, 
If I change this to Zoe, all right, I get a five, which is perfect. What if I put in here um, AAA just to try it? Boom, I get invalid use of null. Why? Because it returned a value that doesn't exist. There's no, there's no record that fits this criteria. So you might get a null value if someone puts in something below that. So that's what NZ is for, NZ, and then comma. And then what do you want to return if there is no value? Well, we're bringing back a page number, and page number is a number, so bring back a zero. Okay, now I can say, actually, since we're bringing back a number, we should change S here. Instead of S, let's use P, all right? Dim P for the page as along. All right, initially, I was going to bring back a name, like George and Aaron. Well, I started off with a name, right? Dmax the name. But if we're bringing back an ID now, we want to change that to along. It still worked because access is pretty good of taking numbers and converting them into strings to display them. But be very careful when you're doing actual uh, comparisons of those values. But see, now I could say if P equals zero, then status, no page uh, valid or whatever, right? Exit, sub, and if. And now I can status. And I can do something like um, target should be on page P, like that. Ready? And go. No page valid. See? If I put in here Bryce, Bryce should be on page two. All right, how about Frank? Frank should be on page four. Perfect. All right, let's try Zoe again. There you go. And that is how you use Dmax, which is very close to DLOOKUP, right, to find the largest word that is less than the target. The, the, large, the largest page number less than the target word. And you could do the same thing. If these were just letters in here, right, like we talked about before, A through M is one thing. We could go A, right? Let's say uh, H starts the next group, right? N, R, and then, uh, I don't know, um, V. Okay? Same, same concept for our grouping before. If I do Zoe... All right, Zoe will be on page five or in group five, whatever you want to call it. Okay, if I type in Bill, all right, Bill's on page one or in group one. Nancy, okay, and page three. And it's not case sensitive, by the way. Okay, uh, Rick, see? Because Rick is alphabetically, alphanumerically larger than just an R. All right, there we go. That's how it works. Want to learn more about this alphanumeric grouping? In the Members Only Extended Cut, I cover a lot more stuff. First, we'll add a word table as well, so we'll track what words are actually on each page. When you search for a word, it will first look to see if the word is in there already. If it is, it'll open up that form you see, go to the right page, and then go to that particular word and show you exactly where it is. If the word doesn't exist, it'll prompt you, and say, hey, this word should be on page 12, but it's not in there. Would you like to add it? If you say yes, it will add it and then again open up the page right to that word. I will also show you how to automatically set the next page number to the next number in order. And a couple of other tricks. How do you get this? Well, it's the extended cut for my members only. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the Show More link below the video 
to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page, and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with, or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.